wait, 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 wait. If it's your first one to five years of skating, and you're still really learning transitions and you haven't completely mastered them, I really think that you should listen to the first part of this video. The reason why I'm adding this part first is because it's about the mindset. And changing the way that you think and changing the way that you practice is gonna be extremely effective. Well, let's get into it. Okay, let's start off by talking about some mindsets. I think the mindset of a skater in the rink is super duper different than the mindset of a skater who's learning to skate park, they learn how to skate on the internet, or they're learning to skate down the driveway or skate the street. In the rink, we're inside of an enclosed circle. So that puts the shape of a circle in our mind. And we also spend a lot more time turning because we have to turn. However, if you're skating in the park, you're probably thinking about skating as a square and then there's some obstacles in the middle. If you're skating on the street, you're probably thinking about, okay, I skate straight down the street. Sometimes I turn on the street, but I'm not really doing a whole bunch of curves unless I have to. Maybe you're in the garage, you might eke around the curve, but the turn is not an integral part of your skate. The second really, really big difference between people that skate in the rink and people that skate at the park is in the rink, the transition is a basic movement pattern. A lot of styles create their movement, they create their aesthetic, they create their tricks by turning forward and backwards while you are rolling in the rink. However, a lot of people who are learning uh, tricks outside and they skating around outside, Turn around from front to backwards is the trick. It's not a basic. So they hit it and it's like, whoa, why? This is some accolades. Accolades. Oh no, I pay my dues. The ring, especially like when I was growing up, I just noticed the way that people would dance, the people were flipping forward and backwards. I just knew if I wasn't practicing my turns, if I wasn't turning in a more complicated and more intricate way, I knew that I wasn't dancing. I knew that I wasn't turning up. And so that really pushed me to do it more. But when you're skating outside and when you're skating around a lot of beginners and people who don't really understand tra transitions on the same level, hitting one is like boom. In the skating rink, we spend most of the session skating because we are skating in a circle. That is the activity. There's no stairs to jump down. There's no you know, grass to walk over. We don't jump on our toe stops and go take any pictures in the grass. It's all skating. And so we spend a lot more time getting better at skating. But let's say you learn how to skate in your garage or you learn how to skate in the driveway, or you're learning how to skate at the park. You spend a lot less time actually skating. Skating to do a trick, going for the trick, and stopping is not skating. You're skating at the park before the trick, then you're hitting the trick, and you're skating a little bit afterwards, but it's a lot of stop and go. Compare that to continuously skating around in a circle. And this might be the deepest point. When I'm in the ring dancing and when I'm in the ring really getting it in on the outside, I do not skate. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. See, one minute. Pull my eye, pull my eye. Bye bye. The second thing that we do is we spend time skating patterns. When, you're, when you think about your skate as you're skating in a square or you're skating in a straight line or you're skating down a path, you don't really think about it in a way that's gonna help you effectively practice skating. So that means we skate in lines, we skate in circles, and we skate in eights. When I'm in the ring, I do not transition in a line. I want you to expand your mind for a second. Yes, you can transition in a line. Yes, that is a great strategy. But when I'm in the ring really cooking it up, I skate in curves, I skate in circles, or I skate in eights. And what I do is I use the curve, and when I'm coming off here, I use it as a trans to transition, boom. But if I'm coming this way, boom. If I'm doing the circle, I'm using the circle as a chance to transition. If you only skate in a line, you don't hit this level of understanding. In fact, I'm about to tell you something even deeper than what I said. I'm gonna tell you something one of my OGs said. He said, hey yo, gotta be easy. 
Back in the day, I was just dumb by the time. He said, bro, a lot of times, I don't even like to skate the whole ring. Sometimes, I just skate in a small square in the ring. Why don't you try to do your tricks and your dance moves in an eight instead of trying to do them on the whole ring? It's too much space. You don't have as many chances to turn. Make sure you do them in both ways. Oh my God! Wow! The big reason why we do this and the big reason why we practice it like this is because skating in a circle and skating in an eight specifically, it helps you build your inside edges and it helps you balance on your skates more. So because we spend more time just skating, we spend more time getting balanced at skating. So when it's time to do a transition, we're a lot more balanced. Finally, it comes down to something that I think is one of the biggest misconceptions in skating right now. People think that you have to skate outside of your comfort zone to get better. People are always on the internet talking about if you're not falling, you're skating inside of your comfort zone. And if you're skating inside of your comfort zone, you're not putting in work. Honestly, you do not get moves and you do not get better by skating outside of your comfort zone. You figure out the basics that you need to practice and you practice the basics that you need to get the strength to do those moves. Skating outside of your comfort zone is silly. That's how you catch an injury. And the thing with the circle, the eight, and then the line in both directions, those are the basics that you need in order to be able to transition effectively. The second really big thing that I want to change about people's mindsets is the function of the transition. A lot of people think about their transition as a trick. So they'll skate forward, transition, turn around to the camera. Oh my God, he on X Games mode. However, the function of the transition is to go from skating forward, rolling forward, do a turn and then roll backwards. If it is your goal to do the turn and stop and you stop, great. But if it's not your goal to stop, then you are missing a integral part of your transition. I just destroy my consignment. The roll up is the top part of the mountain. The turn is the first part of the mountain. Rolling the way backwards is the second part of the mountain. Can you skate backwards? Like, can you skate backwards? That might be one of the reasons why you're turning more than 180 degrees and you can't roll the belt away. And a lot of times, and a lot of beginners, especially these days, they're learning tricks by just muscling them until they get them. And when you just muscle tricks, you eventually putter out. You get to the point where you just plateau. And you plateau because your body's not strong enough to get to the next level. I really take this from the artistic camp. I remember one day I was skating in Jersey. I'm on full discretion. Seeing Roller Boogie made me want to be an artistic skater. I started going to the ring and I started trying to skate just like Jim Barry. And one day, homegirl walked up to me. She was like, hey, yo, bro, what's up, dog?" She didn't really talk like this, but this is how I'm gonna say she talked. And she was, and I told her, I was like, yeah, man, I'm an amateur artistic skater. She said, I can tell. And you know what she gave me? She gave me some of the best advice I've ever had. She said, yo, I used to artistic skate, and what we used to do is we used to skate transition patterns in order to get them strong. That means in the artistic skate camp, they are using patterns and drills to get their transitions strong. And if you really, really want some strong transitions, and if you really, really want to get it, it needs to be a part of your warm up. Transitioning isn't a trick. It is something that you build every single skate session. You need to pick out like four or five transitions and make sure you're doing those every day. That's actually how I got my transition. I made up a warm-up routine and then, and then a piece of my warm-up routine after I warmed up skating in the circles and doing the eights and stuff and doing a little bit of footwork, I would skate around the ring for about 15 minutes and I had like five different transitions that I would do. I would practice them both ways. And by drilling them both ways, I really got a chance to get good at them. And I really got a chance to practice them with some speed. Now that we've taken some time to talk about the mindsets, I want to take a second. I spoke about the drills, I mentioned the drills, but I just want to put a section of drills 
into this video so you know what you should be doing, how you should be practicing, and this is the thing that you're gonna be doing every single day. Practicing these drills every single day will set you up to do everything that I'm talking about in this video. Anyway, let's get into it. Many skaters want to start in a transition because it's one of the cool popular moves, but they skip an extremely important step. Understanding how to skate. So my first drill for balance is to skate in an eight in both directions. This is going to help you understand curves more and it's going to help you get really acquainted with your inside and outside edges. The next thing, we're going to walk it out like an usher. Just pick them feet up. Hold it. Both legs. Back that thing up. You're a big fine skater if you back that thing up. To build your balance and footwork, practice your book by picking up your feet. You have to be able to pick up your feet comfortably to transition well. So a lot of people talk about transitioning and a lot of people talk about the transitioning footwork. But I want to take a second to talk about the body work and just kind of like when I'm doing my spin when I say I'm practicing the mop and the reason why the mop is one of the most important techniques that I teach is because it is also the basis for your pivot. This is the same motion and this is the same rotation that I use when I'm pivoting and when I'm doing different turns. And if your shoulders aren't tight, then you can't transition well. If you're not bringing your hands in intelligently to where they need to go and moving with your force, then you're not going to be able to transition well. In order to transition, I like to do something that my homie Bootsy said. Shoulders, chest, pants, shoes. <laughs> First you're coming forward, you first you move with your shoulders. And then your chest moves with your shoulders. And now your legs or your pants move, and then your shoes or your skates move. And that is the order that your body moves in while you're transitioning. I guess, you know, some people do say head, but your head is already facing this way. And your head kind of turns with your body. But the basic idea, shoulders, chest, Hands, shoes, wipe me down. I'm gonna give you some unique ways to transition. I know this is the part that everybody's been waiting for. Let's check out the tutorials. What's up, boss fam? Today we're gonna learn some new transitions. This first one is known as the boss step. You're gonna step your left foot next to your right and then use your shoulder to make a small rotation. You can also do this one to the back. The next move is known as the boss skips. This isn't a 180 degree transition. You're gonna step in front and behind your skates. Let's look at it again. Front, behind, front, behind. Get the footwork precise. I'm stepping in front and behind at a 45 degree angle. Use this to mix up your dancing. Ball swings are a little bit more complicated. You need to balance on one foot and you're going to transition on your other foot by swinging your leg. As I pivot my leg, I shift my foot 180 degrees. As you kick, you shift and switch your arms to stay balanced. These are known as the ball swipes. You're gonna do your book and then you're gonna take one foot and pull it across the other foot. Pull. Let's take a look at the feet. We roll into our book, and after we turn around, we take our left foot and pull it across our right. This is a way to get additional speed and momentum out of your transition. Notice how I use my arms. Boss outside pivots, it's getting real. Yee, yee. We're gonna start off with our boss swipe. Now we're gonna pick our left foot up and put it back on the ground. We're gonna go spread eagle for a second before stepping our right behind our left and kicking our left out. Swing your left leg to the outside of your body and bring your arms into pivot. Boss inside pivots are really similar. You're gonna start from the book, but instead of completing it, you're gonna pick up your left foot and use the momentum of your book to step over your right foot. Yes, just like this. This one is a little bit more difficult, so make sure you take it slow. Let's take a look at the footwork. 
you do the circle and then you're gonna pick your foot up and cross it over. Circle, pick up your foot, and then you use that to do your rotation. On transitions like the boss inside and outside pivots, it's super important that you're using the curves to make the rotation. Now it is time to talk some common misconceptions. This is the most important part of the video because as I'm looking around, I'm noticing a lot of people practicing their transitions like this. Speed is not the goal. Everybody's always so focused on trying to do their transitions as fast as possible. Doing it faster isn't even a marker of success. What you really want to feel is you want to feel like you are pushing yourself forward even as you're turning around backwards. You want to focus on making sure your footwork is locked in. It has to be extremely specific. What I notice a lot of times is people just kind of cheese or they'll muscle through their transitions. So their footwork will be a little bit sloppy or maybe they'll just jump around a little bit or there's a little stumble move. What you want to focus is transitioning as smoothly as possible. If you really want to get faster and if you really want to be able to do your transition faster, it's not about trying to do it faster. It's about locking in that footwork. If you lock in that footwork, you're gonna be able to do it faster. I know there are some beginners out there with cheats. I know maybe one of your more adventurous friends might tell you like, hey man, just do a small 180 at the end. I used to use that to get the all the way around or maybe I'll do this to try to swing and throw myself around. It works. Oh, the best person that skates around us does this is cool. What I'm here to tell you is, from somebody that has actually transitioned fast, from somebody that truly has these skills, when the cards are down, you do not want to be guessing about your transition footwork. You don't want to be like, oh, is it left foot, right foot? Oh, is this the moment where I need to turn? Because you're going to slip and fall. I promise you. If you don't have the footwork locked in and you actually get to speed and go for the turn, you're going to slip and fall. But honestly, you're not going to slip and fall. You're going to feel that you don't have that stability and you're not even going to go for it. You're going to chicken out. And you want to know how I know? Because I've been there. Your body knows when you're not prepared to do something and your body will stop you from doing things. The only way to really get over that fear and really get to that next level is to really be sure. So I like to practice my transitions with the same idea that my piano teacher gave me way back in the day when I was trying to learn how to play fast. In order to play the piano fast, you don't just jump on the keys and start playing fast. First, you get your arpeggios in. You gotta make sure you're practicing. And then the second thing that you make sure that you're doing is first, you start off at a four bar section at 60 beats. After you can do it at 60 beats per minute, four times, no mistakes, you come up to 65 beats. Four times, no mistakes, 70 beats. Four times, no mistakes, 75 beats. And you might be saying, hey, yo, bro, that sounds tedious because it is. But think about it like this. You want to run around doing all types of crazy, unpracticed, kind of okay, inefficient footwork that might uh, trip you up and slam you on your head? Or do you want to take it slow so you can grow? Because honestly, man, you can keep on doing your transitions fast, but until you get your shoulder mechanics in and until you get your feet mechanics in, you're not going to get it. A second really big common misconception that I'm seeing is that anything is okay, that jumping around towards the end is cool. Honestly, there is a place to turn around backwards from a 180. That is a legitimate move. There is a place to slide around. There are places to do a lot of these different things and to add a lot of flair to your transitions. However, a transition is a transition. A 180 is a 180. A slide is a slide. These are different moves. 
Blending them is a more advanced technique, but you still need to focus on being able to skate. Because if you don't have the base amount of ability to transition, then that's what's going to hold you back. And honestly, listen to a brother. Listen to your brother, Dunbeezy. The way that you want to skate, that pretty California boardwalk stuff, the freewheeling emo on Fortnite, you can get that so easily if you focus on the footwork of your transitions and focus on making sure it feels like you're actually pushing off the ground. Feels like you're creating momentum with your feet because that's what's gonna take you to the next level.